Welcome back vinyl lads and vinyl ladies. I'm pretty stoked because today we're going to talk about one of my all-time favorite bands and that's Reliant K. But this is a somewhat divisive record so who knows where this goes. It's going to be very interesting so just settle back and relax and we're going to dive right into it here on the Vinyl Brotherhood. First off, I'd like you all to know that I am a huge, huge fan of Reliant K. I'm even wearing their t-shirt today to prove my dedication. But I was around back in the early days when they were the really cool youth group, punk poppy kind of band. And I got to witness their evolution to the alternative rock superstars that they are today. And with every single release, they grew by leaps and bounds. And it was just something, some, something very awesome to witness over the years. And they've had a very... A special and profound effect on my life. So today we're going to cover their seventh album, Collapsible Lung. And if you know anything about this band, you might know that it is not their most popular record. And there's good reason for that. I am not a fan of Collapsible Lung. It is not an album I am taking to the deserted island. Their trajectory over the years had been fantastic, and then they hit this bump in the road. And I'd kind of like to dig into this record a little bit and maybe look into the the whys because I have so many questions guys and we're gonna see if we can get some answers but let's take it over to the record player and go from there. I've been spending all my time falling in love you should know better but it's so much fun when I'm with you now there's a missing person poster hanging up at the bar cause I Recently restocked, that's the only reason my completionist self decided to review this record in the first place. And I have so much beef with Collapsible Lung that I'm not even going to get into how much I dislike this artwork. If you don't know, Reliant K is characterized by their upbeat punk pop kind of sound that they've added on to and evolved over the years as they sort of took a shift into more alternative rock territory, including other instruments like pianos, acoustic guitars, multi-part harmonies, and then we have Matt Thiessen's vocals and his uh, vocal melodies that are insanely catchy and addictive. Always a, they have very strong choruses, and then their lyrics are known for being equally witty, cheeky, clever, as well as thought-provoking and introspective, and very personal and easy to relate to on any level. So it pains me to say that a lot of those great things are not necessarily applicable to Collapsible Lung. And this is such a strange record. Um, they kind of go for a more top 40 radio friendly pop approach uh, so much as to even include collaborators and co-writes. And why, I don't understand. Matt Thiessen's already insanely talented as a writer and uh, Matt Hoops. I've always viewed as kind of an underappreciated asset to this group. Not to mention the rest of the band, which all took off shortly after the completion of this record. And honestly, um, I can't blame them, but I don't know if that was in response to, you know, any of the process of making it. But um, I don't know, it's just so bizarre. Even like the marketing for this record was nearly non-existent. And uh, at one point, um, and this has kind of been memory hold on the internet since then. I might have to try to find it again. But Matt Thiessen even likened it to bad Tom Petty albums from the 80s. I don't know what that's about. But let's move on and talk about the music. Um, ultimately, this album consists of nine pop experiments bookended by two songs that sound a lot more like Reliant K. Let's talk about that majority portion. So they try to like emulate these songs from the bands of the time, the popular acts of the time. Um, and when I say of the time, I really do mean it. This album sounded dated the moment it hit the shelves. And listening back to it now, several years later, it doesn't really hold up. They, I can hear some like wannabe Jason Mraz in there, some Carly Rae Jepsen, uh, piano pop bands like, you know, the Coldplay or the Fray. None of it really works for me. None of it really sticks. It all kind of feels generic. 
it all kind of feels like a weak attempt to sort of capture that sound. And it's not genuine because it's not, it's not Reliant K. It doesn't seem like it's coming from a genuine place. And it's like they have like these boxes, like you're checking off all these boxes of all the pop trends of the time. Like you have your, your a, a, a vocals in there, like your, you know, R&B vocals. You have your crazy, weird, unnatural inflections on songs like like Boomerang and uh, Can't Complain, you know, your obligatory Jason Mraz song. Um, programmed beats and the corny whistles on the Lost, on Lost Boy, which might be my least favorite Reliant K song of all time. Um, and uh, songs like If I Could Take You Home, um, very synthesizer, pop synthesizer laden. Uh, no, side note, on this album, it, they kind of try to go for, uh, they try to push the envelope content wise. And Reliant K coming from like a Christian background, they're known for, you know, being generally really family friendly. And not that they have to be, but the way they kind of go about it on this record is pretty cringe. And uh, it sort of reminds me of my middle school days on the bus when the kids on the back would just let the ex expletives like fire on all cylinders to prove how grown up they are. Um, that's sort of how their a lyrical approach feels on this record. So sorry, Reliant K, not feeling it, not crazy about any of these songs. It was, it's always very unfortunate to have to revisit them with a few exceptions. Disaster is kind of interesting because they are taking, um, some bigger risks musically. Uh, and it sort of hints at what's to come later on down the line for them, bringing in uh, some more natural instrumentation, some weird clunky pianos and distant, dissonant horns to sort of express what the song is, the lyrics are conveying, and uh, they do it to much more tasteful effects. And then you have a song, when you were my baby. Uh, it does feel a lot more like the traditional Reliant K song. Is it great? I don't know, but it's definitely a breath, a breath of fresh air on um, an album that has been pretty dismal up to this point. Now, to talk about the songs at the beginning at the in the end, um, Don't Blink, the first track. It is a little more guitar-centric and might be more familiar to Reliant K fans. Uh, still definitely has that pop sheen to it. And, uh, you know, you even have your, your group chant chorus, big group chant chorus, because that's what we did in 2013. And then Collapsible Lung sort of takes more of a rootsier, natural approach with acoustic guitars and the lyrics are a lot more, um, I guess, uh, what we're used to from Reliant K. Very, uh, you know, personal, kind of reflecting on, uh, his life and uh, yeah, ultimately that's just kind of the album. Not crazy about it, but I'd like to, uh, I guess, first address even those better songs. They are a little bit flimsy. They don't necessarily hit home for me because they're, they're sparse kind of, even at a writing and um, production level, they don't have that same kind of like profundity and thoughtfulness and attention to detail that we're used to from Reliant K. And uh, that applies to the whole record to, to, different, to a different extent, but it's just a shame that even on the better songs on this record, that still holds true. And now, um, I'm just left with so many questions. Why is this the direction that they felt they needed to take? Was it just like a fun experiment? Is this something they felt they needed to do? On comment sections, I'll, I always read things about how bands can change. Bands can change over time, you know? Music is all subjective. The band can do whatever they want. All this is true. Doesn't mean I have to enjoy it. Doesn't mean that it's a successful work of art, you know? Um, I mean, it's like you can't compare... I'm trying to think of like... I don't know, pick any given top 40 artist they're not, they're, you can't compare them to, to Bach or Beethoven. So they're different, art can be successful at different levels and uh, I don't consider Collapsible Lung to be a successful effort. However, I have heard theories. I have heard a theory that Collapsible Lung is actually a very loose concept record about how Matt Thiessen lost his way 
and the music is bad intentionally to reflect how lost he is and how um, how messed up he is. And then at the very end, you have the good song, Collapsible Lung, and uh, you know he's come back to his roots. He's he's found his way and he's seen the light, and that's why Collapsible Lung is the better song. I simply don't buy it because we have this album, the final product, and nine of these songs are absolute ear sores, bookended but what book by what are like glorified Reliant K B sides. If that was their intention, then I have to question their execution. This isn't the way you do that. Um, this isn't the way you write a record. So, no offense, Reliant K. I love you guys. I don't love this album. And uh, if you're not familiar with the band, don't be discouraged. Listen to virtually anything else they've made. You'll find it much more rewarding. So, I have some final thoughts. We're gonna head back to the couch and hopefully leave this disaster behind us. Guys, you could only imagine my disappointment back in 2013. After Forget and Not Slow Down, we got an excruciating four-year wait, and this was there waiting for us at the end of that four-year wait, and I was just sitting at my desk hoping it would get better, but it didn't, and it was such a bleak time. I was so, so upset. Um, and even the mat said, um, I'm not really sure when or where, but I remember them saying something like, if they hadn't made Collapsible Lung, the band wouldn't have continued. And uh, it was something like vague and ominous like that. And I'm not really sure how to interpret it. But um, thankfully, there is a happy ending to this story. In 2016, they released their follow-up record, Air For Free. And that album is something of a masterpiece. And depending on the day you ask me, I might even say it's their magnum opus. Definitely listen to it if you haven't yet. And if Collapsible Lung had to happen in order for Air for Free to happen, then I welcome it with open arms. But, um, you know, this album's a reality and we just have to live with it. So on that note, I think I'm gonna go ahead and give it a score. And regrettably, I'm gonna have to go with probably a four out of 10. And with that, I'm not sure that there's much left to be said, except that uh, maybe sometime down the line, we'll review a Reliant K album that I feel a little bit better towards because they deserve it and you guys deserve it. And I think it would be good for all of us. So until that day, we will be here at the Vinyl Brotherhood. See you next time.